here and um and the reason i just thought that this might be quite an interesting case just to um to chat through is that uh, she's there's two aspects to her which are she has a pronounced really really pronounced gag reflex and she's really really nervous um she'd had uh, a lot of work done previously in fact she'd been uh, treated by specialists in Manchester over the years. So, Dipesh, you'll remember Gordon Smith. And um, uh, there's also another chap called Alan Quayle, who were like pioneers of implant work in at the dental school in Manchester years ago. But anyway, she'd been treated by them over the years, and then Amin and Minion had started to help her. But then when I set up the practice up in Garstein, because she lives locally, Amin said, why don't you go and see Finn now and he can look after you. So, so Liz came to see us, but you can see she's got like historically, she's got loads of, she's got these four implants in the, in the lower. And can you see all of the bone loss around that particular implant there? These are the really old ones that Gordon Smith used to use in Alan Quayle, which are the Frylet F2s. And then, this had one had failed here, so Amin and Neil Wilson are putting another one there. So just keeping her going. But her main concern was the upper when she came to see us, which is this massive bridge just on here. And we've got caries on these three abutments, anterior abutments that have failed. Um, and so she wanted to have um, some fairly straightforward and simple treatment she was she's getting she's in her late 70s and just wanted some simple work doing but uh, these posterior teeth these two sixes or sevens were reasonable condition but the answer is not great condition went through all of the options for her and for the upper and um, this is what we came up with uh, for to do an immediate upper a window denture and some of you might not know what that is but it is fantastic for if you've got two or even one remaining molar teeth wait for 12 months and then make a definitive metal based denture there so so that's what we decided to do and the approach would be for me to section that bridge into little bits, take out those roots, and then leave those two back teeth as crowns essentially, just section the bridge and leave them as crowns there. So this is um, treatment one, um, so visit one. So I did a futile bite just in intercuspal position. This is futile D, bite registration material. And now it's really about trying to get a really good, just one impression for Rowan to be able to make me a good denture. But because it's got this open here and these anterior teeth are in poor condition, I'm worried about the impression tearing, potentially pulling out teeth, pulling the bridge out, etc. But also the issue is um, Liz has got this really, she's, she's just, really hates dentistry she's one of those patients that walks in the room and doesn't look you in the eye you know it's just, she just does not like being there and um and also she's got this really pr pronounced gag reflex so with these types of patients i just sit them down at first this is you can see this is way pre pre-covid i've got lots of stuff on the side there i'd have it totally clear now and be wearing my mask etc but I like to just rehearse it and talk it through what I'm going to do for the patient beforehand in doing the impression. But the other good, interesting thing is, and this is why I wanted to share her case, is that about 13, 14 years ago, I did this course run by Tom Thayer. And it was on dental acupuncture. I don't know whether Tom runs it anymore, but this is another chap that's running it now. But it was actually a superb course for helping to 
um, really reduce gag reflex issues uh, for patients. And so I did that and it was, it's been terrific. So occasionally I will use this as a, um, um, you know, as a, as a measure for helping patients. But what I want to um, just, I've put the screen on now, like this bigger screen is that what I like to do is rehearse it with the patient before I actually do an impression. I want to run through it properly with them as a dry run before I actually do it. And so I'm, I've got the patient sitting up and I talk through the whole process with them. And I talk about breathing through the nose, meditational breathing, using the belly, and wiggle your toes at the same time. So, um, but I'll, I'll show you what I actually did for Liz here. So. And Finn, does it work every time? Or with all these tricks, do you still get the odd person? It Come works. On. It works really well, but there's, there's loads to it. So I'll just bring it in it. It's, it's very much, the dry run's really, really important. And uh, just to show you how I actually approach the impression here, I, I, I've actually cut off the outside of the tray. So this labial portion there is missing. A blob of compound in the center. And that's warm. And I take that to the mouth. And again, this is a practice dry run doing this. And so breathing through the nose. And then once I've done that, this compound acts as a really nice stop. And it also stops the impression material going down the patient's throat as well. So I put alginate in there, a nice thick mix of blue blueprint alginate. And then here is, this is the video here of me actually doing the impression for Liz. So I'm just rubbing some alginate onto the, occlusal surfaces with my finger before I actually do the impression but notice here I've got an acupuncture needle just there on the chin now if you don't have acupuncture needles then just using a pen pressing firmly or even your thumb on that point I find works really well but also Claire is really well trained for this she really looks after the patient too whilst I'm doing the impression. So uh, this is the video. I've not got the sound turned on, but this is what we're saying to her. We're saying to her like, now I'm just rotating that in. I'm going to push that up to the back first and then rotate it up forwards. And then Claire's taking these out and I'm talking to the patient constantly. And Claire is too. Notice Claire puts her hand on the shoulder and this is with permission beforehand and Claire is holding the patient's hand now and just helping her through it. You'll see that she goes a bit red now and she starts to gag. Um, I've got the sound turned down here because I know Rachel you'd hate to hear this at the moment and uh, but the but she's coping beautifully and we're talking her through it. Breathe deeply through your nose, wiggle your toes. And the other thing that we've got going is a stopwatch on the side, which, um, so I can say to the patient, well, you've got a minute to go. It's a little bit like, you know, doing circuit training with a, 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 a personal trainer. And, you know, you've got 10 seconds, keep it up. And it just helps them with that mental approach to that. But the other thing that I do during this process, which is really important, is I twiddle the acupuncture needle as well. So, and, that, and if I don't, wouldn't, didn't have the needles, I'd be just putting my thumb on the chin and just pressing that, just keep stimulating that acupuncture point and it really helps. So any questions about that process please um, how long do you leave your alginate to set for uh, the alginate takes three minutes 46 seconds from the point of mixing so when it's in the mouth it's 
it's just about two minutes. So that's length of time. Um, and then here we are, I've had to wait for it to set and then I've got to just gently push, you know there's that big hole in that bridge anteriorly, we're gonna just push it out, and just gently take it out. And then here what I do is I've just trimmed the alginate. So I've got, I take it away from the interdental spaces so I can reseat it and also cut in some grooves, pop it back into the mouth. And then this is a few years ago, I'm using um, some Futar D bite registration material to record the sulcus now. Um, I would now use a heavy body silicone to do this. So I'm trying to record the depth of the sulcus here. So it gives Rowan a really good sulcus impression. So I'll just take that all the way around and we're encouraging her through the whole process. Look, she's nice and calm now. And then I just massage the lips just to coax the impression material up into the sulcus there like that. So that's what it looks like just from the side. I've got nice border molding and then just gently take this out. You know, just lift that out, gentle encouragement. You know, she's coping really well, beautifully. Just lift that out there and that's it. So, and then what we do is what Rowan does is he glues that together with super glue. So it's like a jigsaw. And then we can then mount that model, cut off the teeth and make the window denture. So, and that's what the window denture looks like. It's really fantastic. Um, Dipesh, you'll have seen this at, when you did your masters at Manchester. Fraser loved these. Um, and it's got Moloplast B windows and rings embedded into the denture itself there. And they are really, really good. And actually with, with Liz here, because she was so anxious at the treatment visit too, we had um, a sedationist, Gidju George, came up to do this for us. Who's, he's based in Liverpool and he did um, conscious sedation for Liz during the, the process here. So I've sectioned the bridge, taken out those teeth, and that's the denture in place. So that's the immediate denture fitted. And so we've got nice windows around those back teeth and they just fit up against that. And then it's just a question of maintaining this over 12 months and doing some relines. I generally do a chair side reline at two months, a, a lab reline at four months, and then she's in a good holding pattern then. And then 12 months later, I've got, I can do my primary impressions a really lovely border molded definitive impression. And then this is the metal based window denture at the end of the day, which has got this lovely, really solid chassis metal framework in it. And inside the, this portion here, when we look inside the denture, we've got Moloplast B that's embedded in there, but I've got a nice acrylic post dam all the way around. We can reline that in the future quite easily. Um, and the Moloplast is like a little O-ring that just fits around those back teeth like that. It just goes into the undercut by one millimeter there. So just like that. And, um, and she's coped amazingly with this, even though she's got this pronounced gag reflex. If you notice though, I have taken the center of the, the palate here, that's the vibrating line or where the fovea is. So this is the optimum extension. Um, I've brought that forward, but we still got it going right the way around these hamula notches. So should she lose one of these support teeth, which is, you know, fairly, you know, she's, she's still got a good bit of life in her yet. 
and it's likely that she may lose one of these posterior molar teeth. We can still add it onto the denture in the future. So, so that's how she is currently, Liz. And in the lower, what I'm going to be doing in the future is just taking this apart and putting some locator abutments on the implants that are savable and making an overdenture at the bottom. Um, but it's, um, it's worked really nicely for, 